IO. Uh, let's continue with our Cisco IOS router labs, and today we're going to talk about OSPF. Just give you a little bit of info up front here, and uh, and then we'll get into configuration. So we're just going to talk about the basics of OSPF today. It can get um, pretty complex, but again, just the basics. Um, so OSPF is uh, open shortest path first. It's a link state protocol. It uses hello packets to elect a DR and a BDR. The DR is the designated router. The BDR is the backup designated router. Um, so the designated router's job is to flood the link state updates to all the other routers in the area, right? So he's the guy that tells everyone uh, what's going on with the routing topology. Um, and OSPF uses areas to put boundaries on the flooding of the link state updates. Okay. Um, all routers have to have at least one interface in area zero. Area zero is known as the backbone area. Um, you can have routers with interfaces in zero and then another area. And those routers are called the area border routers, ABRs. Um, so if they get any updates um, from one area, they have to pass it along to the other area to let them know what's going on there. Um, any routers that redistribute other routing protocols into OSPF are called the ASBRs, the Autonomous System Border Routers. Um, okay, I think that's the, the basics you need to know. Um, so let's get into some configuration here. Um, so in R1, well, our, our topology then, we have a site with two routers in it. Um, R6, 10, 10, 10, 2, R1 at 10, 10, 10, 1. Uh, R1 has three serial links out to three remote sites, R2, R3, R4, with the 20s, 30s, and the 40s subnet there, you know, slash 24s. Okay, so um, to enable OSPF, you do router OSPF, and then your process ID number. This number here, this number one, it does not have to be the same on all the routers. It's not an autonomous system number like an EIGRP. You put the same number that you would put here on all your routers to keep them all in the same autonomous system. Not the case with EIG or, uh, with OSPF. With OSPF, you could have a different uh, number here, process ID, on every router, and it wouldn't make a difference. Okay, so we're going to just put one here. Maybe I'll put uh, I'll put two, three, and four just to show you on those. Um, so router OSPF and your process ID, we're going to use one here. Um, you're going to do network statement. And we want to put all of our interfaces here, our 10 and our 3 subs, point-to-point uh, -point serials, uh, into uh, OSPF. We'll just put everything in area 0 as well to make it easy, okay? So uh, network, 10, 10, 10, uh, inverse or wildcard mask. And then area, and we want zero, right? Um, we'll do the same for our serials. Area zero. I'm just going to up arrow. It'll be a little faster because we've got a four subnet and we've got an eight. Because these are all slash 30s, right? <clears throat> um, one thing to note is um, during election, uh, it doesn't happen over a point to point link. So over the serials, there's not an election between R1, R2, R1, R3, R1, to find out who's going to be the uh, the DR and the BDR. It doesn't happen over serial point-to-point uh, -point links. Okay, It only happens over uh, multi-access links like Ethernet. Um, so down here, we'll have an election between these two routers to find out who's going to be the DR and the BDR, but uh, not over here. Okay? Uh, or not here, between, you know, across the serial. Um, so we're done with R1 there. Uh, we'll move on to whatever pops up here. R6. Okay, we'll leave him for last. That's on the same because I'll, I'll we'll debug the uh, the election so you can see that happen. Um, so R3 is good. Config D. We'll do our router OSPF. Our process ID. I put three here, just for the crack. So we got three over here. Um, network. We want to put our Ethernet interface into that. And we'll just leave them in area zero as well as our Uh, point to point, and uh, here it's the four subnet. Put that in area zero as well. Okay, so three is done. Um, see, you just created an adjacency there. You saw that pop up. Uh, we don't need to switch. I'll do router OSPF. Uh, we'll just go back to one for the sake of keeping it easy. Um, Network here is 40. Put them in area zero. <clears throat> and the point to point is uh, the eight subnet. In area zero. 
So he's done. Um, I think we missed a 20 somewhere, right? That's our six. There he is down there. Um, do a router, OSPF, one. Yay, yay. Area zero, and then our point to point, uh, R2 is in the zero. Area zero. Perfect, he's done. Um, so if we pop over to, uh, where did our six go? Right here. Okay, so we'll, um, let me show you a debug. Uh, so do debug. Uh, IP OSPF ADJ for adjacency. Um, you can't put in the whole word adjacency. The command is ADJ. <clears throat> okay, I'll just turn that on while we enable OSPF on this side. And you can see the election take place between these two routers because, again, they're on a multi axis network, right? They're on an Ethernet, not a point to point. So we should get an election process here. <clears throat> um, let me state this too then. Um, so the election process, uh, the, the, how they figure out who's going to be the DR, who's going to be the, uh, the BDR. The one with the highest um, OSPF ID is going to win. Um, interfaces get IDs. By default, it's one. So if you haven't uh, altered those at all, then they're all going to be the same. So who's going to win the election then? It's going to be the um, router with the interface that has the IP address. That's the highest. Okay, He's the one that's going to win the election. Um, aside from that, I uh, should point out that OSPF prefers loopback IPs. You'll see a lot in OSPF networks that there's loopbacks configured, and there's strictly two reasons. One is to uh, um, because they're preferred over all the other IP addresses. Um, like, so you might have serials in the 192 or the 172, but put your loopback down in the 10 subnet. Your loopback's still going to win because it's preferred. If you didn't have the loopback, then the 10 would lose out if it was on an Ethernet, and their serial with the 172 or whatever might win, right? Um, so that uh, uh, would give you the router ID by the highest IP address. Um, so to keep the router IDs uh, uniform, people use loopbacks as well as, <clears throat> because loopbacks are always up and up, right? So if you had an interface flap, your whole OSPF topology would start changing, elect a new DR, uh, um, a DR and BDR, or whatever, whatever might happen, depending who went down. Um, so they use the loopbacks because they're always up and up, right? So there's a couple of reasons why they use them. We're not gonna use them here though. Um, so I'm just trying to get a little bit fast because I have a feeling I might be getting on 10 minutes here. Uh, router. <clears throat> OSPF uh, one. Uh, we'll do network, and we've only got the one Ethernet on here, and we'll put him in area zero. We should see a bit. Well, right away. See, there's an election going on. We'll just let it let it stop. Uh, and so, if we just have a look back at the top of that debug, um, right away. Eh? So interface E00 is going up two-way communication to uh, 172.119. So it's looking all the way back here um, to that serial, right? Probably because he's the highest. Again, if you see, he's got the highest, right? Um, and there's no loopbacks on here. Um, backup scene event before wait timer. Let's see. There you go. DR, BDR election on F00. Uh, BDR, 10.10.10.2. DR, 172.119. BDR 10 10 10 2 right because the 10 is on is on uh, the R6 down here which is lower than this guy's highest interface 172 right 1.1.9 right here the serial so he seems to be winning out right um, so in the end elect R1's serial interface to be uh, the DR and the Ethernet on this router we're now R6 is the BDR see that eh so there you go we're the, uh, we're the we're the BDR. I'm really running out of time. I want to show you a couple of commands. Um, you can do a show IP OSPF neighbor, right? So we can see uh, this guy's serial over here is one out. So R1 is the DR. And we can do a show uh, IP OSPF interface. And we'll look at F00. And you can see down here that... Uh, our router ID is, uh, oh, that's our address, but it's also our router ID, 10 to 10 to. Um, should say in here, yeah, state, we're the BDR, right? Um, I think I have to stop and let you run through this on your own. Uh, set it up and check it out, play with it. It's good fun. 
Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm over 10 minutes at this point, so I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to get cut off. Just want to show you show IP OSPF neighbors in R1, and you see he sees all the other networks, the 20, the 30, the 40. He sees the BDR at 10.2 down below. We should be able to. Uh, I'll do one more quick one. I'm sure I'm killing myself here with the time. Uh, we could. We should be able to do like a ping over to the 20 from the 40 that we're in here, right? And it works out perfect. So I just wanted to show you that. I got to be way over time now, so I'm going to get out of here. Any questions? Uh, let me know. Leave them on YouTube. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.